Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video, we'll provide an update on Tropical Storm Debbie and when and where we could see Tropical Storm Ernesto form. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaltibbets.com for Tuesday, August 6, 2024. The black arrows pointing towards Tropical Storm Debbie off the southeast coast of the United States, finally emerging, at least the center of it, emerging over water, but still pr propounding a lot of rain inland, uh, causing flooding across the southeast. Then we have three tropical waves that we're monitoring, Disturbance 1 in purple, and then pink and blue in the main development region. And not much is going on with disturbance. One, as you can see, it's looking lackluster, devoid of some thunderstorm convection. Here's the vorticity signature of all three that we're monitoring. The fourth tropical wave off to the right is off the screen at the moment, so it's not there, highlighted by our red box right now. But here is the latest satellite image of Debbie, and you can see its center has finally made its way off the coast of the southeast coast of the United States, but there's not a lot of thunderstorm convection around that center. So strengthening of this system's unlikely. Uh, it will maintain tropical storm force being over water. It won't weaken back down to a depression, uh, but it's not going to strengthen potentially back up to a hurricane. At least it's not forecasted to, even though it's going to sit over here for the next two days because the shelf waters here are cooling down with it sitting here continuously. It's not getting to the warmer Gulf Stream waters, which is a little bit further out. Here's the latest forecast from the National Hurricane Center. It's moving east-northeast at 3 miles an hour, so that's a crawl. Winds are 40 miles an hour, so it's barely a tropical storm at this point. But you can see it's not going to be moving much over the next few days. Uh, in fact, it's not really until we get to the latter half of this week on Friday that it finally starts to up and get out of here and move much quicker Friday afternoon into Saturday as it moves way from the mid-Atlantic mid into the northern portions of the northeast and into Canada. Here you can see the agreement with the models. Uh, at least in the next 48 hours of where this storm's going to be slowly chugging away to. And then days three to five, a little bit of a spread, but at least an agreement that it's moving into the northeast and not going to be drifting west or drifting east anymore. Because it's, like I said, going to be over water over the next two days, it's going to maintain its tropical storm strength. And then once it goes inland again with its secondary landfall, that's where you see the drop off in intensity. But that lingering is going to cause even more rain to drop on the Carolinas and then now up into the mid-Atlantic and interior northeast. And also where I live on Long Island, where we're going to see these bands come in from uh, Debbie over the next few days. And it's going to just dump a huge amount of rain up and down the eastern, eastern half of the United States, so flooding is going to be a very high chance. Here's the key messages regarding Debbie. On the left is in English and on the right is in Spanish. You can pause this to take a chance to read it. And in terms of peak storm surge, when it makes its secondary landfall, you can see upwards of two to four feet around the North and South Carolina border. Here's the latest satellite image of Disturbance 1 in the Eastern Caribbean, losing a lot of its thunderstorm convection now that it's entered a higher wind shear environment. It's got only a 10% chance still of developing over the next two days, still only a 30% chance over the next seven days, but I could see that decreasing because it looks to be more land interaction than it's staying over water. So let's show you that on the models here, the GFS. 850 cyclonic vorticity, so this is the spin and energy in the atmosphere. Black is Debbie, purple is Disturbance 1, and then pink and blue are our two main development tropical waves. Here's the wind shear environment. You can see high wind shear throughout the Eastern Caribbean, so not much chance for development for Disturbance 1 at the moment. Also through the main development region as well, so we're not expecting those tropical waves to develop 
as they are becoming devoid of their moisture and indebted embedded with the Saharan air layer uh, that's just to their north thanks to that wind shear. So let's move forward now to two days on Thursday, August 8th. You see Debbie is still sitting there right off the coast uh, of South Carolina, so not much movement of that system. Purple tropical wave disturbance one does move into the southern Caribbean, uh, just to the east of Nicaragua. And there, it would be its best chance, I think, for any possible development because we'll have a light wind shear environment, no land interaction just yet, and a lot of moisture. So we need to keep an eye on this region for possible development of Disturbance 1 because after that, it's going to be crossing over Nicaragua, Honduras, into Belize, Guatemala, and Mexico over the next three days after that to day five on Sunday, August 11th. And it'll be in the southern portions of the Bay of Campeche. I know this model has varied a lot. Two days ago, it was saying it was right behind Debbie going towards the eastern uh, Gulf of Mexico, Big Bend area of Florida. Yesterday, it was showing it going to potentially Houston. Today, it's now taking the same path as our earlier storms in the year, uh, Alberto and Chris where it was taking that more west western track across the Central American southern Gulf of Mexico region. And that's because we have high pressure again keeping this storm suppressed on this model run. So uh, we'll see if this changes again tomorrow, but right now it's looking unlikely that this system's going to develop into anything significant unless it's right before uh, Nicaragua or Honduras's landfall potentially in the Southern Caribbean. So here's day seven, which would be next Tuesday, August 13th. And you can see disturbance one is already gone and we are left with two tropical waves, one in blue that's just coming off the coast of Africa now will be near Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands in about a week's time. And then another tropical wave in red, right coming off the coast of Africa. Uh, light wind shear environment between them but wind, higher wind shear right where those two tropical waves are. The blue one has an upper level trough or a tut that it's going to be interacting with, so that's going to limit its development. As you can see, some of that uh, green around the tropical wave is being blown away by that high wind shear, and then the wind shear by our red tropical wave just completely embeds it in that Saharan air layer. So unlikely to see that develop, at least on this model run. European model is a little bit more uh, conducive for it, for those two tropical waves to potentially develop. They have their vorticity signatures a little bit more robust. So we'll see if that's the case. It was correct showing the initial forms of Debbie. It was a little bit uh, showing disturbance one, but then backed off on it, where GFS then said, hey, it could develop. And here's the ensemble models showing that both systems, both models now are backing off on disturbance one developing, uh, but European models still bullish on that dark blue tropical wave potentially developing as it gets close to the Caribbean islands. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, but right now, uh, not much that we should be concerned about except for the flooding potential from Debbie. So we'll continue to monitor Debbie's slow progress into the southeast United States and then eventually the mid-Atlantic and northeast and Canada by the time we get to the latter half of this week into this weekend. We'll monitor the disturbance one to see if it does develop in the southern Caribbean before interacting with Central America. And we'll monitor these two tropical waves and the wave behind it for any potential tropical development next week. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on the ciphering weather, so if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.